Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. This tip is going to talk about using water splatter to give texture to your paintings. And there's um, two methods you can use. Uh, well, actually there's several ways you can apply the splatter, but I'm just going to show using a spray bottle today. So I have my uh, spray bottle and you want to use a spray bottle that has an adjustable um, tip to it because if it's just a misting bottle, that won't work the same way uh, that a bottle with an adjustable uh, tip will work. So I am actually going to get different pigment here. The first one is going to be done wet on wet. So I am going to get some paint on the paper. I'm going to wet the paper just because that will give me an interesting um, blend of my pigments that I put on. And I have cobalt. I will get some sap green and I'll just go with those two colors and I'll just apply it quickly and this might be used in uh, maybe a background of a painting where you um, may be doing the background wet and wet and then you decide you want to um, add some texture to that area and I'm actually going to add a little more blue, just make it a little more dramatic here so it's easier to see the water droplets when we put that on. Once you have the paper wet and you have your paint on there, you need to give the area a little bit of time to start losing some of the shine. If you try to do this technique too quickly, the uh, spray from the spray bottle will just drip the water on there and then it will mix in with the wet area around it. So the um, moisture level on the surface of your paper actually needs to start to dry just a little bit. So while that is happening, I am going to apply some color to show you another way that you can get uh, wa use water droplets on your painting. So this is just on dry paper and I'm using the same colors. I'm using cobalt and some sap green and I am just painting it on kind of quickly here and I, I'm putting it on rather dark because I want to um, have the technique show up. So now giving it a few more seconds on the upper one. Again, it needs to start to lose the shine on the surface and not be dry, but not be really shiny. So I will crop this part out, give it a few more seconds, and then come back. I have now given uh, the uh, area up here time to dry some more, and then I dried the bottom part with my blow dryer so that it would be ready. And this has got just a tiny bit of shine on it now, but it's not uh, really wet. So I'm going to cover the bottom one just to make sure that it doesn't get wet. And then using my spray bottle, sometimes I'll check it in my hand to see if I'm getting um, large and small droplets sort of spread out. And it is not, when you go to squeeze the handle, it's not a long squeeze, it's just a real short um, squeeze to get some water droplets onto the paper. And that um, worked really well, and sometimes it, it works really well for me, and other times it will uh, just be a little too wet or I don't get the um, right amount of droplets or sometimes like here they're they're very large and, and over here they're a little smaller so it is a random um, effect and you have to expect that. Uh, this now is what's happening is where the water droplets hit the paper it creates a little miniature bloom because that wet 
wetter area pushes against the drier area and creates l these little miniature blooms. And I like this better than salt for texture because it does have um, a randomness to it where you get bigger shapes and smaller shapes. And sometimes they are um, random because the water droplets will combine and then you get less of a um, similar shape the whole way through. And so I've used this in several paintings and um, really like that effect. So that's one way that you can use water droplets. And then the bottom way is using it on dry paint. And some pigments will pick up easier than others. And I'm going to use that first piece um, or that paper again over here and spritz. And then I have to count to about 30 seconds. So I will cut that part out. So it's been about 30 seconds and now I have a paper towel and I usually just bunch it up. This one is slightly damp here. Sometimes you just don't want it really wet, but sometimes having it be slightly damp can be helpful. And now I can uh, go into this area and lift by pressing and twisting. And then I will twist or turn my paper towel so I'm not adjusting color. Um, and so these water droplets where I've lifted are harder edged than the ones at the top. So it would really kind of depend on what you're doing, but you still get a random spray. So I have some that have combined right here. I have some that are a little larger and then some smaller ones. What happened here, I think, is my paper towel was slightly uh, too damp in that one area. And when I lifted, it actually was the moisture level on the paper towel that um, lifted those areas. So um, taking that part out, this is kind of the technique and what you would hope to get. And uh, two different ways that you can use water and lift to uh, get texture. Please follow along in future videos as I post uh, once about once a week for these tip, trick, and technique videos. Have a good day. Bye.